All right, let's come into scene number four. The team is not performing up to the standards of Mr. Ben Affleck, so he's coming in with a little bit of motivation. I'm gonna keep this short, okay? You passed your sevens over a month ago. Seth's the only one that's opened the necessary 40 accounts for his team leader. When I was a junior broker, I did it in 26 days, okay? You're not sending out press packets anymore. None of this Debbie the Time Life Operator bull So get on the phones, it's time to get to work. Get off your ass! Move around, motion creates emotion. I remember one time I had this guy call me up, wanted to pitch me, right? Wanted to sell me stock. So I let him. I got every rebuttal out of this guy. Kept him on the phone for an hour and a half. Towards the end, I started asking him buying questions. Like, what's the firm minimum? That's a buying question. Right there, that guy's gotta take me down. It's not like I asked him, what's your 800 number? That's a off question. I was giving him a run and he blew it, okay? To a question like, what is the firm minimum? The answer is zero. You don't like the idea, don't pick up a single share. And this putz is telling me, you know, uh, 100 shares, wrong answer, no. You have to be closing all the time and be aggressive, learn how to push. Talk to him, ask him questions. Ask him rhetorical questions, doesn't matter, anything, just get a yes out of him. If you're drowning and I throw you a life jacket, would you grab it? Yes, good, pick up 200 shares, I won't let you down. Ask him how they'd like to see 30, 40% returns. What are they gonna say, no? you. I don't want to see those returns. Stop laughing. It's not funny. If you can't learn how to close, you better start thinking about another career. And I am deadly serious about that. Dead f***ing serious. And have your rebuttals ready. Guy says, call me tomorrow? Bullshit. Somebody tells you that they got money problems about buying 200 shares is lying to you. You know what I say to that? I say, hey, look, man. Tell me you don't like my firm. Tell me you don't like my idea. Tell me you don't like my f***ing necktie. But don't tell me you can't put together 2,500 bucks. And there is no such thing as a no-sale call. A sale is made on every call you make. Either you sell the client some stock, or he sells you on a reason he can't. Either way, a sale is made. The only question is, who's gonna close, you or him? So TJ, yesterday in the sales training, we were talking about, in general, just wrapping up. Once you have earned the commitment, you've proven value, don't assume that it's the responsibility of the buyer to initiate that closing process. You have to ask for what you want. And a guy named David in the back who does a lot of sales training for a company who had some folks attending said too often they're afraid to ask that last question, basically to close them. And obviously in this movie, right, it's the hard sell, it's the close on something that they probably don't believe in. It's all about money. Uh, for us, it's really just the conclusion, the summation of the buying process, but sometimes we spend all this time and you just have to ask a question that, yeah, I guess there might be some risk of rejection of getting a no, but quite frankly, that's almost rare these days. How often do you see things kind of linger on because we're not asking that closing question? It, it, it happens for sure. And, and not only that, how about the complete opposite, knowing when to walk away, uh, knowing to say, sure. this is not worth my time. Um, that's, that's, that's major because if not, we don't need the exercise in this business to be just spinning our wheels, right. uh, especially with how hard it is to, everyone's time is, is completely been squeezed. The market's been crazy. Um, being able to, to get people to work for you is, is hard enough. So the resources are, have, are squeezed. So time is squeezed. That only compounds things. So if I'm doing this and uh, we're, we're going down that road, you better have a good idea preemptively to know, is this going to be a sale? Because if not, it's okay to walk away. Again, yeah. we don't need the exercise. So, you know, do your due diligence as your own person. Again, we talked earlier about not not throwing away your time in margin. Don't throw your time away either in prospecting to get that sale, to get to that last step, because you're pretty much doing the same thing. We talk about time management. That's one of your big uh, categories for you. And if, But we have to break it down on, on such a finite level with each salesperson that is working for you so that they know, you know, it is okay to walk away from a sale. Or what are you preemptively doing to make sure that the best chance that the sale is going to close with you. And and that's where that salesperson has to have that, that sixth sense to know, you know what, I think this is going to work. And and th th there's a way to do that, right? But it's not, it's more of an art rather than, all right, 
all right, if you get to step two, then right. go to three, then jump to four. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, it's not as it's not as black and white in my in my opinion anyway. Yeah. So I love this line. I'm gonna read it for you. Tell me your thoughts. Jim says, if you can't close, then start thinking about another career. I'm serious. I'm dead serious about that. Have your rebuttals ready. You know, if I'm hearing that and I'm in that room, I'm probably not in that room listening to that conversation because it just goes <laughs> to show you, you know, it is, they, they, they really don't care. And you almost wonder if that, that statement of, of what Jim said is really more about really what they're what is going down this pyramid and hierarchy that it's filtering into these trainees ears and then they're all going out and banging phones when at the end of the day the only fly in the ointment for that whole room is Seth because he's the one who's authentic he's the one that's listening it really doesn't pertain to him it's really pertaining to all the other people that are out there and so it's almost like that it's not even the 80 20 rule it's like 99 1% rule where that's that's what they're trying to bank their money on, that they're going to get maybe 1% of the calls, that one person that's sure. going to say yes and take it. So rebuttals, that is what they're going to get, right? Yeah. So it's kind of like a expect, it's, don't expect the unexpected, expect the expected, and can you handle it? Yep, yeah, pure law of large numbers. Yeah, We're going to convert 1% of these calls, so yep. if we only make 100 of them, but if each one of you guys do 1,000 a day, right? Right. I like, though, this uh, idea about rebuttals, what we'll, we'll call them objections, we always get objections, yep. right? And when we're working with teams, I will say, okay, let's think about whether existing customers or <clears throat> prospects we're going after, what are the most common objections we hear? And initially, there's often this mindset of, oh my gosh, there's hundreds of them. Like, generally there's not. Generally, there's somewhere between a dozen and maybe 24. But the 80-20 rule will certainly apply to those. You're going to hear these ones come up again and again and again. And again, this might be a... You know, hey, we're buying framing. Uh, there turns out they are putting kitchens in their homes. We sell kitchens. We just don't sell them kitchens. Why? Well, they have an objection. They're buying it from somebody else. This is the way we've always done it. Whatever. But too often, we're not really thinking. Okay, we hear the same objections again and again and again. Have we been thoughtful about the fastest way to get by them to determine if we're a fit? We're not going to close all of them. But too often, we do a poor job of articulating that. Would you agree with that? Yes, and it's called sweat equity. That's how you're going to get through. Um, you have to be persistent, um, persevere. Uh, you, you have to find a way. And, and sometimes that door is not open. Right. Um, you have to wait for your time. And I don't care if it's uh, you're, you're trying to move up um, in, in your career or if you're trying to uh, win a customer. Wait for your time. Be patient. And when that time comes, you, you only get one shot. You make it another one, but you have to treat every time you get an opportunity, you win, you move on, you lose, you go home. Yep. And that's the way it is, okay? Um, and 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 if you live by that mantra, when you have that opportunity, step in, do the best that you can do, and then repeat and repeat. Be consistent and that business will stay there. And then we're talking about that time log starting to lengthen and that comes with the trust and the love and the support that you get from your customer until he's locked in with you and that once that, that that once it becomes a certain amount, maybe it's like thirty six inches. You can put that around your waist, and now you got the belt on, right? You got the championship <laughs> belt because you won that customer, and you got to do that again and again and be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. I'm glad we're in addition to capturing audio, we're capturing video because I wasn't sure where we were going. Yeah, but we like, defined it thirty six yeah, inches. It was like you know, it, like a little a mime <laughs> prop belt. The big That's gold a, buckle on it. Yeah, that feels right. Yeah. That feels right. Well, we lots are of Texas. diamonds too. Yeah, lot, lots of time. Yeah, rhinestones. Big rhinestones. Big belt yeah. buckles down here. A lot of leather. Uh, a lot of leather. All right, let's let's bring this bad boy home here. No. Uh, so again, <laughs> Boiler Room. <laughs> if you haven't watched it, not a great movie. It's not. The music also. Eric and I, we were we were watching it yeah. together. The music comes right out. The leather jackets. I don't know why we'd ever think the uh, what was her name Abby. Yes, Abby, yeah, why yeah. she would ever yeah. consider going out with with Seth, mm -mm. the pulled back hair, the leather jackets. I struggled with that. However, from a sales perspective, this is mandatory viewing because of the sales aspects of it. And overall, pr pretty good flick. 
Yeah, it, it, it is a good one, um, and it's enjoyable to watch. And uh, when you break it down, and, and I, again, for anybody that's young uh, that's coming into the business, yeah, I think that it'd be a great, uh, you know, some, just something to a resource to watch. Um, everybody's business is different, but if you're in sales, you know, it's you, you can take a lot of different things from a lot of different movies and and put them put them in your arsenal, put them in your quiver, and see what works for you. You know, if you're not trying, then you're not you're not selling. Yeah, and. The reality is good economy, bad economy. Our business is never gonna sell like that. It's a completely exaggerated sense of sales, right? So we're never gonna be doing this sort of cold calling. Uh, however, I think you can watch it and certain elements here, I think would absolutely be good sales training elements to think about. So TJ Shaheen, El Tigre, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks for watching The Boiler Room. Sometime in the future, American Psycho, Tropic Thunder, Fletch, maybe. We'll see. Popcorn? I'm in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>